So we finished the final video, uh, the last video on a cliffhanger. Uh, we were asking about what kinds of reasoning are appropriate to what kind of domain. And we shouldn't pretend that science is a single domain. There are many kinds of sciences that use very many different kinds of way of approaching results that reason in different ways. But in general, we wanted to ask about the nature of reason within a field like mathematics, which is curiously different from any empirical science, to science in general. And the answer is this. There is an answer to this. In mathematics, we use deductive reasoning, almost by definition. Mathematics is a purely formal exercise in which um, very explicit, clear, unambiguous procedures are followed in order to arrive at results that thereby um, have maximal certainty within the framework of mathematics. And it's an odd thing about mathematics, which is that nobody knows what it's about. Mathematics is a, as I said, it's an abstract intellectual activity. We are constantly surprised at how well our mathematical reasoning lends us support to our engagement with the real physical world. But we have no blessed clue why that is. It's a matter of great interest. In science, on the other hand, we use inductive reasoning quite commonly within very narrowly defined fields. But in general, scientific reasoning is more betterly characterized, more, it's more betterly, is better characterized as abductive. That means that we draw on a variety of resources in order to make an inference to the best hypothesis. So science and mathematics are fundamentally different in this respect. If you are pursuing something and you call it science and it does not involve empirical observation, observation and measurement of things in the world, then it's not science. Science uses mathematics all the time to construct models. The relationship of those models, which may be mathematical in character, to anything real in the world is to be debated, to be uh, inquired into. The notion of proof belongs in the domain of mathematics and only in mathematics. There is a separate sense of the term proof, which is used in law, but we are not here considering law. It is quite conventional for people to talk about scientists having proved X, Y, or Z. Science does not prove things. Science is not in that business. Mathematics is in that business. Proof means more than establishing beyond a reasonable doubt, which is what it means in law. Proof means establishing a necessary truth, and this is only possible in mathematics. So if someone claim, claims that science is proven something, they're being loose in their language, and it's often unhelpful. It misrepresents the activity of science. It is a basic character of science that all results, no matter how certain, are open to questioning and can always be overturned by new evidence. Unfortunately, that use of language is entirely familiar. So let's have a look now at inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning means taking past observations and using them to predict the future in a probabilistic fashion. Is that a good description of how you um, arrive at your conjectures about the future? I don't know. Um, if the sky is getting dark and cloudy, we will probably jointly look at it and say, oh, it looks like rain is coming. Is inductive reasoning a good way of describing that? We are drawing on our past observations in order to project into the future. Um, one way to describe it is as if we were doing inductive reasoning. And I leave it to you to decide whether that's a good account of what you're doing when you look at a dark, cloudy sky and say, I think it's going to rain. Sometimes it's clear there's no obvious reasoning process behind this. It is a matter of your experience that when you don't eat, you get hungry. This belongs to your stock of knowledge and expectations about the world. I doubt that your expectation that you will get hungry if you don't eat should properly be described as a reasoning process. Again, I leave this to you to decide. What about this? If I pray to put in your favorite God there, my prayers will be answered. Now, this looks like a questionable statement, probably. 
Uh, certainly, if we don't pin down which deity we're praying to, it's a, a form of a statement that is certainly open to question. But um, claims of this nature um, have this peculiar character that people, when they rely on such uh, an assertion, very often tend to look for evidence that confirms the assertion and to ignore evidence that might falsify it. So perhaps in an ideal world, we could view this assertion. If I pray to my prayers will be answered. We could look at that as a hypothesis. And if we're taking a scientific stance, that's great. We like hypotheses. And what we do is we go gather some evidence and see is the hypothesis confirmed or supported at least or falsified. But what tends to happen is that we tend to look for evidence that supports our pre-existing views and to ignore evidence that goes against it. I think that's obviously true in the case of praying to a deity. It's certainly true of gamblers in Las Vegas. Um, but it, this phenomenon that we selectively attend to observations which support our pre-existing views and selectively ignore those that challenge them is known as confirmation bias. And it is something of a problem. It arises not only in science, it arises in the domains of religion and law and anywhere else that people have arguments. And one problem with confirmation bias is that it tends to entrench pre-existing views. One consequence of this is that it leads to stereotyping. So this ad here, for example, is clearly playing with this. It's playing with the fact that people will tend to expect a nurse to be a, a female. Um, something that people might not be aware of. Um, but once an idea gets stuck, it's very hard to dislodge. Confirmation bias is important to recognize as we critique our own reasoning and as we ask ourselves, are we really open to um, the possibility that we might be wrong, for example? But is it a good description of what you are doing as you evaluate evidence and make predictions? We have some reason to be cautious here. We met Skinner's superstitious pigeons, you will remember. These were the pigeons that were kept in a starving condition in a box and fed at random times. And these conditions induced behaviours in the pigeons, which we could describe from the outside as if the pigeons were little reasoners, as if they were saying, ah, food arrived. What was I doing immediately before that made the food arrive? I'll do it again. And having done it again and again and again and again and again, sooner or later food arrives, at which point the pigeon says, gotcha, I know how to do this. That looks like confirmation bias. It fits that pattern, that pattern perfectly. But pigeons are birds. <laughs> um, the fact that we can describe a hypothetical underlying process in these birds as if they were reasoners displaying confirmation bias might lend you to be a little bit cautious about adopting the term confirmation bias or the view of human cognition as um, employing inductive reasoning. It might lead you to a bit of caution with that. Now, this idea that one can identify biases in one's own thinking has got a great deal of popular um, interest of late. And one of the primary thinkers here is a guy called Daniel Kahneman. He's an economist who won the Nobel Prize. Um, and here's an example of what he describes as 20 cognitive biases that screw up your decisions. And you can see them in there, the anchoring bias, the ostrich bias. The I leave you to look over these yourself. Um, and there's the remainder of them. These biases are all variants on the theme of something like confirmation bias. And they can undoubtedly be useful in reasoning, in reflecting on your own openness to being wrong, to recognizing that things are not as you see them, and perhaps also to recognizing biases in others who seem uh, resistant to what you consider rational arguments. Whether they are a good description of what people actually do or not is almost beside the point. These are useful ways of understanding um, the entrenched nature sometimes of 
people in debate who seem impervious to reason. Right. 